Rambo, do you even know your terpenes from your cannabinoids? Mm, I do. Yes. Ah, uh, you know who does? Who's that? Our boy Jaron over here. What's up? Oh, hello, hello. Yeah, man. Good to be back. Good to hang. Dude's yeah. hanging out. Figured we'd do uh, a second show, man. Just chill out a little bit. Why not? Yeah, yeah, but... Come on, let, let's pick it up, Jared from New Millennium. Good to here be to here. hang out. Good to be here. Yeah, this is the second joint show. Third joint show. <laughs> Come on, man. Off track. We, we're bullshitting. We did a little grow science versus bro science a couple uh, I don't know when it was, a couple days ago. Theoretically. Theoretically speaking, yeah. yes. <laughs> you should change your shirt. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. It's been a couple of so days. So easy to do the shirt laundry. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, man, we, I had a Dude has been away or was away for a couple days. May you want to hang out with me and do a show? Grambo, I think we can pull it out. It'll be quite different than the regular dude grow show. Oh, yeah. But we'll give it a whirl. Hells, yeah. Let's see what happens. Let's do it. Right, Let's talk man. about cats. All right. Let's do it. Hey, I'll get into grow talk real quick, okay? Terpenes and cannabinoids. Terpenes and cannabinoids. I, I'm ashamed to say that until I read this article, I did not know the difference, man. Do you guys know the difference between terpenes and cannabinoids? Of course. Yes. All yes. right. Yes. Pretty easy to. That's all right. All fruit contains terpenes. Not not many of them contain cannabinoids. Yep. Yep. And and definitely with you know uh, terpenes being a little bit more associated with obviously uh, 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 smell and flavor. Sure. And cannabinoids being what's actually pulsating through your body. Uh, it's just going into your cannabis receptors. So that's what's chemically that you're ingesting. Whereas the terpenes, although they they are connected, and and even with the entourage effect, uh, uh, and and this acknowledgement of terpenes being really part of the medicinal part of cannabis. You know, really THC is <clears throat> just one small part of not only the, the medicinal side of the cannabinoids, but also telling the whole picture of the medicinal part of cannabis. So, um, yeah, I mean, at, at, a, at a base level, terpenes are those nice smells, flavors, everything else. And then the cannabinoids are actually what you're taking in your body. It's so, actually actually ending up in your brain, blood brain pathways, things like that. Cannabinoids are THC and CBD, as far as we know. And then the terpenes, uh, you've got all these... Yes, uh, CBD, CBG, CBN, CB, go on and on oh, and on and on. Yeah, not about. See, I didn't. Yeah, there's, the first two minutes. <laughs> there's um, shit. I want to say. Hey, boop, shoot. <laughs> Are we like, two minutes in, Rambo? <laughs> there's uh, there's. Oh, I think. Um, yourself, by I the way. think like fifty, some forty or fifty, something like that. Yeah, there's a there's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot of that. What is there like? Probably like eight main terpenes, but the, like when it comes to camel, what, there's a lot. Yeah, that's what this is saying, Graham. But I don't know if I want to scroll through. It's a pretty cool article from I don't know how you say that. M. What is that? Marzine. No, no, the, the website. Oh, move. Run. But there's two <laughs> dots over the U. You know. Um. Uh, move is actually a, well. Yes, I know like, this company well. It's out of Florida. They are. A user of recharge. <laughs> Shout out to Move. Then that's that's the truth. Um, I've been in this facility a number of times. South Florida. It's about a. They have literally like uh, some like three hundred thousand square feet or something of a flowering space. They've got. Oh, um, so I know they've got turpy weed. Then. Yeah, dude. So it's something like like almost. If I remember right. It was almost five acres uh, indoors. It's a good acres, people. Give me the rundown. We do we've done this before, but why not? Mercine, right? It says earthy and musky. Sure. I think and actually I think mercine uh um something like Gorilla Glue that we're smoking right now, definitely right. is that like earthy sandalwood, you know, kind of incense you know, type. So it's definitely in that in that zone. Sure. Linal, sure. Yeah, linalool is the uh, floral. That's always a nice one. You know, you see that in any of the, I mean, brilliant. Yeah, I'm going that gong, will you? <laughs> Damn tugs. <laughs> uh, something, like, something like this, which is a uh, garlic cocktail. I would expect to have quite a bit of linalool in there as well. A little Lou is floral, and that's different than limonene, right? Limonene. Yeah, limonene is your classic, like, yeah, lemon, like, which, you know, which is great. right. It's where the guys can really cook shit. Any of the cakes, anything like that. You yeah, know, piney. Cakes, cookies. We've all had real piney weed before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Karyophylline. Thank you, Rasta Jeff, for teaching me how to say that one. It's like you're carrying Eileen off. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, peppery. Yeah. Spicy. Woody. Huh. Woody. Humulene. 
That's hoppy, I guess, right? Mm-hmm. Hoppy, woody, earthy, herbal. Worthy. Hey, you ever hear of tetraterpaline, man? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> the glaze with tetraterpaline says floral, lilac. And, but look at all these go down. Look at all those, I guess they're secondary terpenes. Yeah, there's there's, there's a lot, man. Well, and, and then there's flavonoids. There's flavonoids as well. So there's a number of different... Uh, and flavonoids are water-soluble, though. That's what freaked me out about that. I, I believe that to be true as well, but also part of that smell and, and, and flavor profile. It's kind of the other, the other part of uh, terpenes is flavonoids, the, the lesser known. Grambo, if you scroll up, it says um, more than 200 terpenes have been found in various strains. Wow. wow. Terpenes are the aromatic compounds that are found in high concentrations in fragrant plant matter and are responsible for the distinct flavor and smells of various plants, fruits, and flowers. Nice, man. Mm. Ner- terpenes are critical chemical messengers. This role allows them to interact with the other compounds in cannabis as well as the human body once they are consumed. It's interesting how they interact with the other compounds in cannabis, right? And that's, that's, that's again, the entourage yeah. of, uh, to the medicinal aspect of it totally. These compounds modulate cannabis's therapeutic and psychoactive effects by working synergistically with compounds like CBD oh. and THC to impact the human endocannabinoid system. Yes. Move. I'm proud. Man, this is a good website. Yeah. Really good stuff here. Yeah. You know, it's interesting, too, just to, as I was reading through it, <clears throat> it's uh, how many different strains there are. Like, like one of the last ones we just looked at, it's in Jack Herrera and it's in Tangy. And it's like, well, those taste unfathomably different than each other so it's interesting to see out of these like sure. 12 constituents terpenes you're creating these cocktails that couldn't taste more different that <laughs> i actually didn't know how what well, if you think about it like a color palette right yeah. you know it's like all of a sudden you know it's the ones on the one and the others on the other and then you put them together and it's a whole new color it's a whole new flavor and that's one of the reasons why oh, I, man. Man. yeah <laughs> right right, right? Yeah. and that's one of the reasons science. why i'm, I'm smoking <laughs> it's one of the reasons why i've never like like worry too much about like memorizing all uh you know or even the main terpenes because right. i'm just kind of like you know what i i like what i like people like what they like it's Where's dirty gym know. socks on there man yeah. <laughs> yeah we'll find it one of my one of my favorite descriptors yeah. um hot trash where's that one up uh, yeah. <laughs> <That's disgusting. laughs> if we're, like, if we're just uh trying to learn here man Terpenes. No, and I, I think it's I think it's great it's, it's it's great great stuff to educate yourself on. Okay, so it says terpenes are small molecules that are produced within thousands of different species of plants. They're easily detected by human sense of smell, require only low heat to evaporate. Cannabinoids are larger molecules that are almost exclusively produced by the cannabis plant. Two most common are THC and CBD. These molecules are believed to work together once cannabis is consumed to increase and alter the benefits of each individual compound. This phenomenon is termed the entourage effect. That's only within the cannabis community. Uh, Come on, this is good. It's good stuff. Can I chat with them right now? (laughs) You're You're live. You're live. Yeah, void heat. That definitely, you know, that's that's again because they are very volatile. Right. It's one of the things you know, and that's one of the things that's great about them is that you get those effects very quickly. Well, and another shout out to Move for one of the only realistic things I've ever seen about how you find strains that affect you personally. Right. Keep a journal if you're actually serious. Now, I don't do that. I don't. I I would never. But if you're serious, that's the only way, man. God, I'd be so scared what's in your journal if you kept a journal, Grimbo. Oh, I got some stickers I could show you, Scotty. <laughs> Tonight I wrote in blood, okay? <laughs> <laughs> My man. All right, everything's fine, man. <laughs> Thank you. This is really good stuff. I appreciate having a fresh perspective. If you didn't see last show, uh, Jaron is educated. In plants. <laughs> hey, I, I educated in plants, man. I got a tough education in plants. <laughs> New millennium. Now, it's, it's, um, I always think it's lovely to, to, you know, educate yourself more and more in plants. Because, again, like we were talking about, you know, um, we really don't. There's a lot to learn about plants. And I think it's one of those things. It's, it's a truly a lifelong endeavor that's, that can be. You know, no pun intended. Fruitful, um, and and you know, um, 
very satisfying. You know what I mean? I, I just oh, find like, oh, yeah. I find, uh, you know, I find plant rearing and, and horticulture and raising plants to be a, a very satisfying, soothing, you know, thing to do. And it's rewarding. I mean, re- producing your own product, whether it's vegetables or cannabis or whatever, it's an amazing process oh, to see yeah. happen. And, and, and to, to, to have the fruits of those labor and, you know, whether it's cannabis to smoke or veggies to eat or, or nice grass to stand on, you know, it's like, it's, it's really, yeah. I enjoy the process in, in, in plant rearing, that's for sure. Abs- I would say fucking A right here if we were allowed to, but <laughs> now we got us in trouble on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it, brother. <laughs> Want to hang out, talk a little grow? Yeah, let's talk some grow. Let's talk some grow. All right, hang on. We're just going to This is definitely, we're already high. Yeah. So we might as well just. Yeah, might as well just look at Yeah. You know? Yeah. You have, uh, first of all, shout out to New Millennium. That's your company. That's who pays the bills. That's who pays the bills. Yep. 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 You have a product called Silicium, which is, hang on, I'm going to try to say it. Monosilicic acid. Monosilicic acid. Yep. Okay. Yep. That is a different type of silica than the potassium silicate. Yeah. That we would see in like, what you know, like, let's say, what is it? Rhino skin. Well, we're going to have a question about silica blast. Okay. Rhino skin, silica blast. Yep. Yep. Any of those early ones that we, we saw on the market. Interrupting this broadcast because uh, Scotty and Jaron didn't invite me. No, I want to tell you guys a great way to support this show, support your grow. Realgrowers.com, or if you're in Canada, rechargecanada.ca to get yourself the recharge. Stop worrying about pH. Get a complete instant compost tea in your soil, in your media, in your cocoa, in your rockwell, whatever you're growing in, guys. You got humix, fulvix, mycorrhizae, aminos, bacteria, trichoderma, kelp. Too much to list. All in one soluble powder that will seriously up your grow game. You will see results in 48 hours or less. Or give Scotty a call and he'll let you know what's going on in your grow. So again, it's realgrowers.com, rechargecanada.ca. DDC producers, you're getting 30% off this product. Don't forget to log into Patreon. Banner's got some new coupon codes for you. And if you're growing and you're not a producer, you're, you're missing out. DDC producer benefits pay for themselves in dividends. Dogrows.com forward slash support is a way to come on board and continue to make the show happen. All right, back to the show. Okay, so this is from Bible Belt Skunk. And what's growing on, y'all? What's growing on, y'all? It's these in the Bible Belt. Come yeah, on. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's growing on, y'all. It's growing, no, y'all. Not a... <laughs> I just had a question about using the product Silica Blast. Has anybody ever used it? I'm growing in five gallon fabric pots. I'm growing sweet. I'm growing sweet skunk. <laughs> I'm growing sweet skunk auto by sweet seeds. If you have used it, please tell me your ratios for the foliar spray. Or is it better to just mix it in your water for your plants? If so, what are your ratios? Thanks in advance. Keep growing, your friend. Bible belt skunk. Bible belt skunk. <clears throat> okay. Uh, something like potassium silicate, it really, in my mind, doesn't have. <sighs> But with potassium silicate, first off, that one you're going to use, I believe most of these are five mils or I think a, they're a like, teaspoon per gallon. Sounds right. So just quite different than uh, monosilicic acid. Which is a half a million gallon. Which is a half million again, a million gallon. So I'm going to mm-hmm. do some math. Grambo, I want you to, if you times two by 100, and then you divide it by 10, mm-hmm. what do you get? It's 10 times as strong, right? <laughs> You even lost me. I was paying attention. You lost me on that. No, I'm just kidding. But it's 10 times. 10 times strong, strong, man. Yep. So when you think about the price or whatever, yep. monosilicic acid seems expensive. Remember, it's 10 times as strong. You definitely got to remember that, understanding that, you know, 0.5 versus 5 mils. So so right off the rip, you okay, definitely have this or not. I'm just going to smoke it right yes. down to the nub. Right. Tell me when you smell the filter. <laughs> um, so here's the thing. In any silica, what and, and this is for any company really, really it comes down to bioavailability. And bioavailability is most specifically tied to molecule size of said uh, 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 silicic acid or potassium silica particle or whatever it happens to be. What makes silicium unique is that it is stabilized in a form that is immediately water soluble and bioavailable when added to water first. And it breaks down to straight monomers, meaning it's just the one very, very small particle of it, as opposed to something like Power SI has a very large 
monosilicic acid particle that has polymerized uh, uh, um, significantly. Now, over time, it'll break down and parts of it will be become more available, but immediately it's not available as ours. Something like potassium silicate can even actually go and become a silicate dioxide, which is not even uptakeable by the plant. What you really want ultimately is in a in a situation where you're putting it into the soil substrate you need it to be small enough to be uptaken by the plant to then be able to actually get into and not polymerize and not actually group up with other monosilicic acid particles because you don't want that to happen because that can actually create gelling believe it or not within the plant itself and then the the, the plant will go and work to expel that gel and it, it definitely uh, 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 inhibits the metabolism of the plant. So ideally, you want a very bioavailable water-soluble form of silica, which is the most one that I know of, right. silicium, gets into the xylem, goes all the way up, deposited in the cell walls, and then evaporates out as H2O. Because if you look at the molecule itself, drops off SiO2, what do you have left over? H2O, that's transpiration. So that's directly going into the cell walls in that way. Number two, you can do it with a with a fuller spray, but again, it has to be very small molecules because you have that cuticle layer on the on the outside of the leaves. And there is very small fissures. There's these little like mini fissure holes that go in through the cuticle, but large mo uh, molecules can't make it through it. It has to be a very small molecule. So things like potassium silicate, take longer to break down over time and I think are better for perennials like trees and shrubs. Sure. And I think that's how they end up in our industry is that people knew that it's not, because silk is not one of the 17 plant essential nutrients. No, it's a nutrient that's a, that, that we learned. Uh, it's a beneficial, right? It's plant beneficial nutrient. Sure. And beneficial it is. But it, with Usually in, in, in running annual plants like we do, you need very high amount of bioavailability. And so that's where things like Rhinoskin Silica Blast, anything that's a potassium silicate, I don't think, and, and chemically speaking, it isn't uh, the best thing to be using for an annual plant. Why do they raise the, first off, potassium silicate, it has a lot of potassium in it too. It does have a lot of potassium in it. A byproduct of it is not yep. pure silica. Yep. Yeah, uh, so just be careful of that. And I've used potassium silicate before. I'm, yeah, man, I have too. I I use it early on. I don't anymore. Uh, I use I use a silicic acid. I use silicium. I, yeah, and, and that. Yep. And that's just because again, it's it's bioavailability. It seems you know what cleaner. I mean? Just silica was tricky to <laughs> dump up your resin. Silica can be tricky, careful. and interestingly enough, potassium silica will raise the pH. Uh, Monosilicic acid actually lowers the pH. Really? Yeah, not much, like maybe 0.1, 0.2, Not not very much at all. Yeah, and that's because it's the way it's stabilized. It is a, in a very acidic solution, so naturally it's going to drop. It the makes pH. sense. So why yeah. would? Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Potassium silicate mm -hmm. isn't acidic at all. Mm. Huh. Mm -hmm. Cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. So again, I think so. I think I think potassium still gets the right thought process. I just don't think it's the best application in, in our world. Agreed. Great information. God, doctor, feel good. What a great commenter, man. Midmo grower, thank you so much. Nine hundred three grows it. Sunny and Bactopia. These are really good comments. You can learn a lot from dudegrows.com. Hey, comment, like, yeah, and subscribe. These How are these do? are great. These are these are great answers on there. Hey, good really job, are. good job, crew. Excelente, excelente. <laughs> well, you know what? I do read those comments, and they say we want more grow talk. So thank you, man. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Busting it right out. Hey, can we give a fall prohibition report? <clears throat> You're supposed to say yes. Yes, of right. course. This is where I missed the dude. Damn it. <laughs> this is, I don't know if we can show anything here, if we got to keep it on the, as the kids say, on the DL. Damn, but that's uh, Navin Johnson's weed right there. Mm -hmm. Navin Johnson's a buddy of mine, DGC. Actually, a buddy through the DGC, which is really awesome. And he grows in two by two. Two by twos. He's got, he, he's a true medicinal patient. And he grows in two by two. He's got two two by twos right next to each other. Are you really showing them? No, you're it's going for it. Um, oh, you got your blur thing, right? Let's see. You've got magic blur. Magic blur. That should be all right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, but that's it's awesome, man. I think great. I think he said he's got two hundred dollars into one of those tents. You know, like his eighty dollar tent and twenty dollar <laughs> fan. You know, whatever. It's that's amazing. This guy's growing his own medicine. 
That is yeah. Fine. Shout out. It's no, that's good quality. It is good quality medicine. You know, and he's doing it for himself, and that's really what it's about. You know, you know, we talked a bit last episode just about oh, you, you know put the positivity around, and though. and you know and and everything in that, and I, and I think this is a clear example of you know is that I mean a no no knock is that the best setup I've ever seen? No, oh, but it doesn't have now could it doesn't have to be. Hey, you are right. It's about that good medicine. It. Giving it like positive vibes and being around it, that does look like it's in his living room, right? Yeah. Or a living space. Yeah. Grambo, scroll through those because I want you to see something. Is there a soil close up? Yeah, those are on carpet. Anytime you grow room on carpet. Yeah, there you go. Oh, cool. what? Yeah. Oh. I see something familiar. What are those? Oh. Now, he's using build the soil and grow dots, which oh. I was nice. Okay. Hey. You know, I mean, it's great soil with plenty of nutrition and he reuses it and reuses it, which is cool. So he's using the grow dots to. Ramp it back up a little bit. Yeah. The, oh, I think that's a great yeah, idea. I think that's a gross. fantastic idea. Yeah, but he's still got all his organics. Still, still got the organics in there. Still got micros in there. Yeah. So tight work and the proof's <laughs> in the pudding. I don't think we're allowed to show it, but do you give that a nod of approval, sir? Absolutely. Absolutely. Great, young, great yeah. job. Keep it up. Keep doing your thing. Yes. Yes. I, I do have to shout out to... Uh, Jesus, the Minnesota. I'm a little high. But the Minnesota, dude, <laughs> it is going full on mainstream there. Cannabis is going full on mainstream. I saw this on CBS News. Do me a favor. Yeah, this is pretty funny. Grambo, see if you can find a CBS News to grow weed segment. Sorry, I just spring that on you at the last second. Yeah, yeah. Just, dude. Yeah, I'll just shut up and play it for a few seconds. You can start from the beginning <laughs> if you want. Not yeah, pretty it's pretty funny. Creation. Well, I mean, it's just like, whoa, wow, this is where we're at. Yeah. Recreational cannabis now officially legal for use in Minnesota. You can grow it at home too. While there are hey, exceptions, just... it will take a while before most Minnesotans yeah, so are able to buy This is a cool expensive. law. Two ounces in public, two pounds at home. Right, that sounds like somebody knows what the hell they're talking about that wrote that law. Like, you're going to let them grow eight plants, you got to let them hold two pounds. <laughs> but just the fact that they're so into growing, man. The plants must be grown in an enclosed locked yeah. space that's not open to public view, whether that's that indoors or in a garden. For more on how to process and how to safely grow cannabis at I home, the CCO spoke with Ian like Davis. Of <sighs> that's, that's, yeah, no. That's 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 dude, dude, now this guy, uh, the, that's the guy this guy's on the CBS knows, bro. That guy's supposed to wait. Me and that guy are friends already. But let it play. He's teaching you how to grow weed. He's talking uh, about flow photo periods and shit. Cycle from what is happening? We can't show it on YouTube. They can show it on CBS. To 12 and 12. Yeah, that's a well, happy and angry. 12 hours. Well, Scott, this is an educational show for educational purposes only. We do the consider ourselves a part of the news organization. And any bots listening, just know that we're, we're reporters. Look at this. <laughs> it's, I mean, I love it. I love it. <laughs> this is so awesome. So do you guys think this guy is a heady glass guy or blunt guy? Heady glass. Yes. I'm surprised he's not in front of his glass. I was he's a hot sauce collection I, guy. That's I, cool. That's <laughs> <laughs> why I brought it up. I thought those were bongs. Dude, this yeah. is CBS News, and he's in front of his hot sauce mm. collection. <laughs> <laughs> we should get this guy on the show. Yeah, yeah, we should. He seems cool. That'd be awesome. Wow, let's wow. reach out. All right, Grandma, reach out. Right. Let's make this happen. All right, cool. And this is, this is something, well, you went to school for horticulture. I did. I went to school for business, and one of the only things I remember, Grandpa, would you click this chart for me? This thing's called the diffusion of innovation right here. And this is just when products are introduced. Mm -hmm. It's like kind of like how much of the percentage of the population uses them. And like the innovators are like, I remember a dude that spent, I think it was $7,000 on an LED light because he was like, dude. He had crazy money. You're right. He was like, dude, this is like the best technology. You don't understand, you know? And you're like, I don't have some yeah. land. So that's the two and a half percent innovators. Then there's the early adopters are like the first to go into the, well, I'll, I'll go with growing, you know? And you're like, hey, man, there's a decent age, as you know, in 2009, you can grow. And there was a couple people that started growing. It seems like that's about 13 and a half percent, it says there. Yep. And that's kind of where I think we're at now. And I think we're entering that blue early majority period. When I see how to grow weed on CBS News. It makes you feel like we're getting into the media, media part of that curve, huh? In mainstream. I'm thinking those two, the 34 and the 34, what's that? 68% early majority and the late majority. There's your mainstream right there. <laughs> yep. 
I, know, know. I love the final category. It's called laggards. The laggards. Laggards. Yeah, that is an official term. And by the way, anytime I... <laughs> that is an official When I try to think of what a laggard is, I think of my next door neighbor when he's just swinging the axe. Yeah, he right. just goes out there once a week and swings the axe. He has like antenna. Can't keep your form up, dude. Yo, yeah. That's why he's still like, he has antenna uh, TV. Like he doesn't have any real TV. Is that what that tower's about out there? Yeah, and he doesn't have a cell really? phone. Really? No, that's a fire watch tower. Okay. Right here, man. <laughs> We're watching for fires. But that's what I'm saying. He is a laggard. You know, so. Is his antenna on top of the fire tower? No. Are you sure? No. How the hell is he getting yeah, that out here in Brentwood? Yeah, because I've climbed the fi- top of that fire tower for some stupid reason to prove I wasn't scared to that guy, okay? And like, hey, I'll climb up here with you, you're 80, and uh, I guess, like, I'm terrified. <laughs> yeah, you're sure. No, but I just think when it's on CBS News, we're getting to the... That there's, yeah. Once it's there, it's accepted. Yeah. You know what I mean? Drug tests will hopefully go away. I did see something recently that was in the news talking about the majority of like federal drug tests yeah. were getting thrown out, right? Yep. And they, all those yep. pre-test or, uh, or pre-employment requirements, mm-hmm. etc. I mean, but that that leads you to believe that it's safe. So I'm saying that you're getting into that that part of the curve when you have stuff like that that's happening. Yeah. Well, what's this mean? Do me a favor. Click the next one if you would. Rest in peace, maximum yield. Oh, I yeah. to go click, click an old link. And Maximum Yield says goodbye. Maximum Yield has formally ceased all print and digital operations. I wonder why. We are grateful for our loyal well, advertisers, a- audience, and suppliers over the many years. That's a sign of the times, no? I'd say it's definitely a sign of the times. Now, that thing's been dead for years, to be fair. Well, because uh, online, or, I'm sorry, not online. But yeah. Like, you're in-store high Yeah, and, 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 and even just, you know. The the necessity the, they 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 live their lives off of the canvas trade shows the early canvas trade shows. The deal is is you know it, it was a strength in numbers kind of thing. And that's what I try and explain to people. You know that was what the importance of these early shows was. Even though if you said bong in there or whatever, you'd get thrown out. You're right, water pipe. Please. Yeah, right. Yeah, please. Yes. But like you know, it was still like okay, if we get enough people together, we can actually like have cannabis products in the place. And so it was kind of this like look the other way kind of thing. As long as we got enough people together, well. People were willing to do that because it was there was some relative safety in that. Yeah. You don't need that anymore. No. You just don't need it. We have this. You have the Dude Grow Show. Yeah. I mean, you know, like it's there's literally not a need to get these people together to like, oh, let's let's feel like we're we're safe and we're not gonna get messed with. Do sure. we can smoke weed somewhere in public or whatever? But even a magazine <laughs> back in the day, having to get them a copy of Maximum Year right. was like the only time I'd ever see something about cloning. I'd yes. Like, wow, an article about cloning. That was a long time ago. I and think I think it served some really good stuff early on. You know, I just yeah. think it's a, like you said, sign of the times. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's sad. It, it, it is. It is. I mean, it's it, it's the death knell has been there for a while. I mean, I think they sold out. What was that to? I don't know some company, and then they never had another trade show again. And it was yeah. only a matter of time. But it is it is kind of crazy. Man, I do see it as a sign of the times, just a different kind of, a different media that's going on. And uh, my wife doesn't watch TV. She used to be super addicted to TV. Like just, you know, I say addicted, always have it on. Lately, I won't hear it on. She's watching her TikTok videos. Mm. You know, and I seen there. So it's it's, it's kind of like when, when that alcoholic, uh, you know, goes and like becomes addicted to running or yeah, some shit like yeah, that. It's, it's like, it's just, just switching the addiction, basically. It's fine. The point is, first off, she's been watching Comedians, which at least is cool. That's funny. Like, hey, I like Comedians. Stuff. I'm a guilty. <laughs> cooking, stuff on, cooking stuff on Instagram. Oh, Send they, my wife like 13 a wait, day. Sorry, honey. It's just, <laughs> it's just the, the, the content is being consumed differently. Differently. Yeah. So here's a, here's like CBS, show, CBS News is reaching so hard. So I went, I went to my... 20 year reunion this year, which was actually 22. Fuck. Wow. God. Oops. Damn it. Uh, um, you know, push it off for a couple years. So it was a late sorry. 20 year. Went down there and, you know, I had a class of over 300 and we'd be lucky if we had 10% of the people show up. But if you think about it, I was talking to my brother about this. Think about Facebook and all these things. You know, you know what pe- the people that you actually care about or give any uh, care about, you know, they have kids, what their kids' names sure. are, what their occupations are. It's like, it's weird. Whereas, like, and my parents, 
you know, generation. It was like they had to go back to the reunion to, to it's true. <laughs> learn any of that or get get caught up with people. Sure. Now you're like standing around, and you're like, Well, I know what she's married to that person. He's married. it's like yeah. you already know the shock to this guy last week. Yeah. So it's like kind of weird just to your point that we're consuming like it's like so even something as basic as a reunion it's like, Well, this is not even needed. But like, every- <laughs> like this is yeah, I don't know. You don't have it was a weird phenomenon. Where every time you see him you think that a fuck up stuff that they've done and you're like oh my god i can't believe this guy's an adult with kids now <laughs> oh yeah yeah i got oh, a, i got a, the first one that pops into my head he's still a very good friend of mine um but i also like he's one of those guys that i could call if i was in jail or needed someone murdered or you know that kind of stuff <laughs> you know now just <laughs> can't be murdered in jail Yes. No. Um, he. You know, there are certain Except people that the like skating. Grandpa. They. Right? Uh, they. You know, they're there for you if you need them, and you know, maybe they're not like you know the best individuals or have done so. <laughs> <laughs> or <laughs> human beings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. We all had a couple of those. Come on, let's uh, be real. I will say, in all fairness, that when you look at a magazine like Maximum yeah. Beauty or anything like that, you could tell they were kind of rude for the home team if you bought some advertisement with them they would say something favorable about you yeah and there's too many honest places to go and look and where you're going to get real information that's uh, the thing this is yeah free and easily accessible everything so easy accessible so you don't yeah. need like us let's yeah. be honest it's like things like maximum yield were dominated by whoever's buying the ad space mm-hmm. like an advanced nutrients or something like that yeah. that's all i can i didn't for me it was always just kind of I don't know, too many, it was all just advertisements and a lot of it was, you know, advanced nutrients, advanced nutrients, advanced nutrients, so it was just like, ah, this is boring to me. But they were, you know what? Look! Look at advanced futures. Look at the money they made, though. They 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 spend a lot of money on that early ad space. Sure. When this is one of the only you know publications that was putting that information out. Are they still in the game? Advanced nutrients, yeah, yeah. still decent size. Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. They're they're also they they worldwide. You know, they they definitely seem to get around, get around well. Nice. I'll. I'll just- I don't Good see that, anything. Man, you know. I'm glad everybody's doing. Well, I got to tell everybody, you buy nutrients for me, you're going to put food on my table and put my kids in sports. You buy nutrients for my advanced nutrients, you're just buying big Nike on the fucking Ferrari. So you you choose. Yeah. <laughs> you go, dudes. Good, man. Good. I appreciate it. I will vote with my dollars for you, sir. Oh, likewise. Good. Yes, but I'll take a free bottle of Cilicium, too. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Grambo, I don't, we don't have any shout-outs. That's what the dude does. I mean, we, we I, can, we can yeah. shout out to like the people that keep us going with the DGC pros. A deal. I was even going to just dedicate a shout out to JR Token. I mean, How about that? Shout out to JR Token. J- shout out to JR Token. Come on, man. Yeah. All right. I got uh, Phantom 420. Oh. That is cool. Dude, these guys ride together. And Magnus Black. Magnus Phantom Black. Phantom 420. And Magnus Black. <laughs> Go hunt the green howler. The green howler sounds like a type of like dog. The green howler. I like it. Those are all cool DGC names. Thank you for the support, y'all. Appreciate it. And show us some pros. We agree, but just scroll down the pros. All right. Pros. Let's check them out. We got there's a whole yeah, new millennium pure ambrolling papers. I need a couple of those. Yeah, I got a couple bottles of can of A and B in my grill right goddamn now. Man, the AC and Vinny fan. Er, Tents rather, but the environmental controllers, man, are a game changer. Be able to put a temperature and humidity sensor on your. Uh, hang on, you're going too fast, man. Sorry. On your tent, HLG. Talk about game changers. Uh, ah, there you go. Integra Pulse. Damn, man, there's too much good stuff yeah. here. Rain science, Nazi. And of course, New Millennium. Oh, yes, yeah, this is awful. awful. Don't and, forget about Real Gowers <laughs> and Playground. Real Gowers. When, Real I go, Gowers. when I go to Costa Rica, I am Real Gowers. Real Gowers. Yeah, I assume the identity of Real Gowers. Ah. Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Love Costa Rica. Oh, good stuff, man. Good stuff. All right. That's what I got. Uh, oh, you want to do a couple comments with me? Sure. This was just one. I don't know if this is a comment or me just thinking aloud. But I was thinking about that this morning, man. First off, one of the comments I saw was, what's the best stoner sport? Something I saw on disc uh, golf. the Facebook feed. Yeah. Disc golf. Disc golf. <laughs> that, yeah. Well, that's to- Now, are you talking spectator? I'm that's- sorry. I think we were talking to watch. Ooh. But I'll go with to watch. Disc golf is fun to play. NASCAR racing. 
is a good stoner squirt. I know that goes good with beer. Well, I'm just saying if you're sitting there watching it, wow, wow, wow. Hey, did I miss anything? <laughs> nope. I was outside smoking my poor joint. No, I don't know. I personally, me personally, uh, I I do love watching college football like Saturday mornings um, in the fall. Saturday morning, you know, getting stoned and watching watching some good football. You know, that's I think that's a pretty common uh, stoner spectator sport. I would say. Oh yeah, but for us, I used to always get together with my boys and watch football mm-hmm. on Sunday at either one or four o'clock. <laughs> what is it? Eleven o'clock here? The game start? <laughs> I'm like, dude, I can. Yeah, it's tough for me. This is a morning person. Tough for me. I was thinking UFC. I get together with my boys and we'll watch yeah, UFC. That, yeah, yeah. And uh, seems to go really good with weed. Seems to go good with weed. All right. All right. <laughs> anyway, I know a lot of uh, a lot of other my stoner friends will get together and watch you. Yeah, no, that's a good point. I, I, yeah, for sure. I've definitely done that a few times, you know. Yeah. Um, indeed, it's, yeah, it's so crazy. There's always so many UFC events on, which makes it easy to get together with the boys. So maybe that's the best one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for some reason, I had a parallel because I've been watching other people's content lately. Uh-huh. And I will say thank you, DTC. You're very kind in the comments. It's like being amongst friends. But man, I seen some comments on other people's channels where I'm like, dude, why the hell do you watch this shit? Hey, if you, if you don't, like, yeah. Why can't you just leave? <laughs> and it just reminded me. I just want to, if you ever think about, just think about the human beings. I'm back to tell you about one of our pros over at dudebros.com forward slash pros. Seeds here now, guys. Simply the best seed bank out there. The most selection, the longest in business. Excellent customer service, seed shipped from the States to the States in a few days. None of this waiting around months like we used to getting stuff from Europe. Um, James Bean's been on the show quite a few times. He's the man on the scene, vets all his breeders, quality genetics, great way to start your grow, man. Start from seed. You don't have to worry about getting any viroids or virus or pests or anything when you're coming in with a clone. Uh, so go to seedsherenow.com, coupon code DUDE10, dude ship. He's got monthly sales every month, so make sure the first page you visit is the on-sale page at seedsherenow.com, and go to the pros list, dudegrows.com, forward slash pros is where you can see all the coupon codes if you forget the words coming out of my mouth. Back to the show. So I want to show you, so I watch UFC, and you know this guy too, the Black Beast. Okay? Oh. Yeah. He's a... Uh... Yeah, Eric Lewis, his name is. He's an owl. Look, that other guy's huge that he's punching right there. <laughs> you know? Yeah, he's an animal. And he's I, hilarious. Yeah, he's, and he's a funny guy. Hilarious. Destroyer of men, though. I mean, dude, you click the next one. That guy is huge that he just knocked out. You yeah. know, it's so crazy. Uh, but then click this next one as I'm Googling him. The dude with a wife, you know? So it's just like these people are fucking human beings, man. You know, so... Yeah, he's a killer. Yeah. And it just, so I just, I seen this one, just click this for the next, just because I like Derek Lewis. He started taking his pants off for some reason after he wins, and he doesn't really know why he does it. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Yeah, yes. Yeah, huh. But here's the last part. Hit the last one for me. And he got knocked the fuck out, man. You know, he gets knocked the fuck out. Eventually, sometimes, yeah, man. eventually it'll get to you. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's not. Oh, I'm sorry. That's him knocking you out. <laughs> the other guy. Well, he gets knocked out sometimes. All right, he's not the champion. Uh, and the point is, everyone gets knocked out. Everybody makes a mistake or whatever. I seen this guy. This is the guy he knocked out. All right, Marcos Rogerio de Lima. And the name of the article is, I can't eat properly. (laughs) And just scroll down. So he talks about the damage he suffered with the loss at UFC 291. And just look at his quote, man. This is the meanest quote I've ever seen. He says that uh, there's a lot of people sending me messages, emails, Delima said. I thought it was going to say they were nice. I've never received that many messages. I lost one fight. And instead of supporting me, people from my country, my fans are bothering me. I took a hard knee. My teeth are all loose. I can't eat properly. It's a hard moment. So let's support our fighters and motivate them. Like, bro, wow, man, that is rough. And I just want to say to, before you say something crappy <laughs> to somebody who's content you specifically go to check out, think about it, man. 
That's this one made we it, got make feelings it too. Yeah, you know, I mean, people were nice to me, but I could not believe what I saw in some of the other. Well, shit, but there's some know? stuff where people are really mean. I will say, and I will agree with you all the times I've ever been on. I, you know, it really, by and large, very positive comments. Yeah, yeah. So I and, just was surprised. Yeah, yeah. Really our, our, the community you created is, 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 is amazing. Yeah, it's but amazing. You see other areas in social media where it's like, like my, the they're just throwing yeah, daggers. Really terrible. But so just, and not here, but just in general, man, you know. Be nice. Be kind to people, man. Even Derek Lewis has his day, you know? <laughs> man, speaking of being kind, I went to a blue <laughs> I went to a bluegrass concert, man. One more time? I was, went to a You went to one. I can't remember who I saw. Who you, I, I know who you saw. You saw the string dusters. At, no, something. no, no. You saw the 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 infamous string dusters at the Mishawaka. Uh, yeah. There's our gorgeous Mishawaka there. Mm. It's a, it's a lovely venue. It's one of the most special venues in all of Colorado. It's amazing. For those of you out there, you know how much of a bluegrass fan Scotty is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, loves but. his bluegrass, which I actually do like bluegrass, and I really enjoy the string dusters. So this is why I love the fact that you got drunk up there by your lovely wife. I specifically got an extra ticket you know, and asked to go. My lovely wife knows I don't like bluegrass. So she does know this. To them. She does know but this. But any concert here, you know... You know what? It is the Mish. Anything at yeah. the Mish is worth checking out. It was a sold out show. Uh, Friday night show, right? Yeah. Yeah. It Friday was night. Friday night. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's beautiful. We're there. Everybody's happy. And then this guy behind me starts a fight. Like, I guess my buddy was standing too close to him or something. And I'm like, dude, you got to be kidding me, man. Look where you're at. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? The Mish. And, but, you know, and then to make it even more awkward, my wife is like, oh, so this seat's open because the total a-hole is sitting next. So she sits there and she's like, oh, I'm going to take this seat. <laughs> I'm like, so I'm like, dude, dude, you're sitting dude. next to the dude who tried to start a fight with us. And so <laughs> I went over, I had to make friends. He was nice. He's just from Chicago. Man. Yeah. He wasn't used to, uh, you know, he wasn't used to everybody being so friendly. And stuff. <laughs> he ended up being really nice. And then halfway through the concert, he goes, you know, I invented Chuck Norris jokes, right? <laughs> Right. I was like, I got to write that down. That's awesome. I'm standing next to the man. Grandma, do you understand? I mean, I mean I've met a lot of famous people in my day, but not What's someone not? that famous. He invented, invented them, invented, Grandpa. Yeah, I invented them after all. I'm not, I'm not sure how he claims that distinction, but you roll with it in that moment. Do you guys have a favorite Chuck Norris joke, just in general? <laughs> Come on. You got one, Grandpa? My favorite one is that Chuck Norris can't lose weight because he never loses. Ah, uh, never is. <laughs> and that's one off the top of my head. I didn't look up a Chuck Norris joke. I, I remember that one. <laughs> I remember that one. Here's my problem with bluegrass, okay? They play rock and roll songs and everybody goes nuts. It's great. Like they play Sharp Dressed Man by ZZ Top. Sure. Everybody goes crazy, you know? Um, but he playing bluegrass stuff. Yeah, well, I understand that. I told um, you that the chick said to me, she goes, every girl's crazy about a thing called meth. And I, yeah, and she looks at me, I'm like, eh. yeah. <laughs> did she have teeth? Yeah, she was kind of hot, man. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was weird. Maybe she was like, no, wow, that is was strange. Confused, man. Yeah, very confusing. You're like, what are you? Hmm. They, huh. They're mountain people up there. Okay, yeah, well, yeah, it can get pretty messy sometimes. <laughs> I can't believe how many freaking Chuck Norris jokes there are. There's infinite Chuck Norris jokes. <laughs> when God said, let there be light, Chuck Norris said, say please. <laughs> <laughs> I like Chuck Norris doesn't read books. He stares at them until they give up the information he wants. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck Norris's tears cure cancer. Too bad he's never cried. Oh. Too bad. Oh. Oh. I used These to love all good. I used to love uh yeah, uh Texas Ranger. Oh, yeah. Texas Ranger. Oh, I love it. Yeah, was stuff, yeah, it was good man. stuff, dude. That was him and the Dodge Ram ripping around. <laughs> the Dodge ah, badass, bro. Oh, yeah. You're right. That was man. badass. I tried to explain to my kid about like 80s TV. I'm like Renegade? Remember, remember Renegade? On the on the motorcycle? Oh, yeah. Lorenzo Long. Lorenzo. I never understood what was the matter with that guy. I was like, what was the matter with that guy? <laughs> <laughs> the with that guy? Yeah. yeah. And then they came up the bat. Dog the bounty hunter, which is just the real version of Renegade. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh my God. Yeah, that was ass. strangely more awkward, though. Oh, I don't my know. God. He was terribly influenced by Renegade. 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 I think so. I think he's like, L Lorenzo Lamas. All the way, baby. <sighs> Let's do this. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Um, yeah, that's what I got, bro. Let's see. Hey, 
you travel first off you travel with uh cannabis mm-hmm. allegedly Alle- well oh you mean like with yes your brother all right his name is cannabis no i'm saying but your brother possibly travels with cannabis you travel all over the place right uh, uh. his brother Taryn. Just, I, just because I saw this article, I think I've had it on before. It's how to travel with cannabis in the car. And then I got in quotes, just really, just ask Jerry. But it was Ben's best practices were carrying it in the car. Like, uh, uh, you can, they, I think they need probable cause or reasonable suspicion, at least to search the trunks. Yeah, like yeah, definitely. I mean, the most safe is going to be in a trunk, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's not, it'd be like anything, you know, you, you don't, and this is where we naturally put it, right? Whether you're actually consuming on the road or not, which you should not be consuming on the road, but we still, it's our natural thing to always keep it close. A lot of times people just throw in the comments or whatever else. Awesome. <laughs> uh, you know, so the classically we always throw it there on the console. That's probably the worst place to put it because it's within within reach, which is really what you don't want. Yeah, that's what you don't want. That's what you. They don't, don't want. want to know that you're smoking down the road. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and I would never admit that you had smoked that day at all because I've even had a friend who was late at night admit that he had smoked in the morning. Yeah, and ended up getting a, a Dewey on that. So yes, you know, yes. like yeah, make him prove it. You know what I mean? Don't be smoking in the car, put it in the trunk, and make them prove it. And yeah. That's kind of where I look at it. It's pretty and then, much. Yeah. And obviously, you know, going state to state isn't as hard as it once was, that's for sure. As far as on the plane, I never have a problem. I mean, I will say the best, just one of the, like, things that just it makes me smile in life is the girl that just went to the Emerald Cup and was getting on the plane to go back, and she just had jars, just like six nice-sized mason jars. Uh-huh. Put them right on the on the, the whatever the conveyor belt to go through, and I remember the guy's like, "Gene, uh, what do you want to do with this one?" <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. Just, did they take him or no? Uh, you know what? I had to go through. You're like, I'm gonna have to see how it happened. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I wish you know travel with like an ounce or so, no problem. I usually travel with the on me. I on my, you? Yeah, I don't put it. Because they'll just steal it. TSA will just steal they it. They will from you. steal it, man. Yeah, they're, they're just sitting around and smoking it. Don't get it. Don't get it twisted. They're not. Oh, but you ain't getting carry on. on. Carry yeah. on freaks me out. No, I always carry on. All right, that's why I asked. Bro. Yeah, I always carry on. Um, in yeah. a jar. I don't do it in a jar anymore. I'll tell you why. Because uh, the metal tops will come up and like I've had a pull. I keep it from stinking. Well, it stinks. Whatever. But uh, uh, bang uh, it underwater, bro. Uh, we'll yeah. do it. I'll put it. I'll like. I'll, I'll I'll double bag it and then throw in like like a sandwich Tupperware. Got it. Uh, uh, so got that'll it. give it yeah, like a little that like a little snap seal. Yeah. Gives it a little bit. I mean, by the time you get to where you're going, you open that that overhead compartment. It's, it's terpy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I like that description. <laughs> terpy. I love it, man. You know what? I will take this time to shout out if you want to grow terpy weed. Check out Real Growers. Real Growers Recharge Grow Dots and. Uh, yeah, that's all I've been using lately. Jared, you seen my uh, my little girl over there? Yeah, I was looking at that earlier. It's yeah. freaking amazing. I don't do anything to it. Just let it... Well, I hang out with it during the day. You know, it's just me and you. <laughs> Speak positively to it, you know. Well, I'll bet you, though. It gets the hang yeah. out here for a while, or they do. Yeah, okay. they've been learning a lot today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm learning a lot. No, and it's you know, the, it, look, good genetics, good love, doing, what, caring about it, putting effort into it. Yeah, you know what I mean. Ooh. That'll get you good meds. You know, you'll get a great, a great example right there. Yep. You know, sure and uh, and the the reality is, is you're gonna make mistakes, but that's that mistakes is part of learning. You know, uh, plants are resilient. They're very forgiving. Just don't overwater them. Ah, isn't that a key, man? People just want to, when you're a beginner, you want to overlove them. And then they just, you want to give them every little thing, and then they don't look good. So they go, I better give them something more. Well, I remember even one time, and I specifically remember this, I was in here and Guru was like, oh, I want to see, I want to see Jaren's COVID weed. And I was like, no, you don't. Because I like it was like I was home for two. It's like it's it's almost better for me to like leave it and come back and leave it and come back. It, it was funny. It was I had a run specifically during COVID, which I was there for every single day of it, and it was not the best run I'd had. Really, really. Turns out you're annoying. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I was no, pissing kidding. them off. Yeah, you know. But sometimes it's like just let a plant be a plant. Mine fold after about forty minutes. <laughs> just like, please go. <laughs> please go. Yeah. Had enough, sir. Get out of here. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm only having fun. Good stuff. Yeah. Uh, 
Tell you what, man. Let me give a shout out to some DGC producers. You ready? Yep. Oh, I like this. Saul Good. Saul so Good. good. Mm-hmm. Q Girls. What's up, Q Girls? Q Girls. Sen- Senor Rasufa. Yeah. Rasufa. Some OG DGC right there, man. Nice. <laughs> Very cool. All right. That's pretty good. I tell you what, a couple more. I will just keep going to Lord Blueberry, Peter Pot Taster. That's pretty fucking hilarious. That's a good one. And Juf and the Beanstalk. Juf. Juf. Juf is the only genetics that I have left because I sent them off for a gene- uh, thyroid test. I kept his Guava Gator from Low and Inner Eyes. He said it's a special cut. So, yes. I think he also keep it tight to my chest. So, sorry, Juf. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, hey, you want to just hang out, laugh at some social media? Thank you so much for hanging out. Of course, out, yeah. Thanks I, for having me. Absolutely. Always I a pleasure. appreciate it. Yeah, dude, you're missed. It's Always. Tough. Yes, it's tough to be, uh, it's tough to try to fill in for the dude. <laughs> anyway, come on, let's hit it. Grandpa, this is why I don't miss Florida. Oh, man, okay. I do love Florida. I'm being, All right. I'm being a jerk. I love going back down there. Uh, but uh, this, what's it say? Colorado prison escapee caught living flashy, flashy. identity in Florida. Mm-hmm. And could this guy be any creepier? Will you show him? <laughs> oh. Dude, that's the, he's an escaped convict. I guess financial fraud is what he did. <laughs> you can oh, tell so he, he just had to walk out the front door, but. You can yeah, tell but, he's bougie because there's a uh, clothes hanger in the in the police car. Yeah. <laughs> hanging on like the breeze shoe. <laughs> police work, right? Oh, <laughs> good police work. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me grab a tie. All right, I ask you both, yes or no on Ast- Astro. Amazon asked me about Astro yesterday. Astro. Oh, I put it on the last minute, Grambo. Great thing. You'll see. Oh, that creepy little thing? Yes, that creepy little no. thing. Right in the middle, man. Yes or no? Why would I make it easy for you, sir? Yeah. Dude, look at nope. this thing, man. It's the nope. first robot for your house. Nope. Like they've introduced <laughs> they've introduced the what the things that listen to you all the time, the Alexa and stuff like that. Uh-huh. So now this is one that follows you and has a tablet oh, boy. attached to it. Okay. Oh, uh it's nope. getting creepy. Man. Nope. No, thank you. Yeah, I seen this when I opened Amazon yesterday. They're trying to tell me I need a robot. What's it do? I don't know. It has two eyes. It's creepy that the only thing when it's shut off it shows is two, two eyes. eyes. Hmm. Always watching. Always yeah. watching. Always wow. watching. How much is it? How much is it? Sixteen hundred. Sixteen hundred. Yes. I but there's free returns. returns. Let's, <laughs> let's get it, boys. I wonder what do it do though? Well, you can watch your dog. You can creep creep out your dog. Yeah, great. <laughs> oh, you can. That's what it must be like a ultimate pet cam kind of thing. Oh my god. I heard they have a vacuum that's fine. Check on in your home from yeah. anywhere. Scanning. It's like I've literally just gone and kicked that thing in the face. <laughs> you guys <laughs> Yeah, you know I mean you guys ever seen uh what was it? It's called Chopping Mall. No. <laughs> there's a, what would make me Google that? There's an 80s horror movie called Chopping Mall oh, uh-huh. about evil robots that they, they have watch over uh, uh, malls and then it just starts killing people in the mall. That can't be from America, right? Oh, yeah. It's a great Asian Somebody movie. spent money on that? Chopping Mall. It brought to you by ads. Well, this is from bloodydisgusting.com. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Top god level. that's funny yeah so i was oh, this thing <laughs> oh hilarious oh and then they're doing a remake holla it's wow land yeah it's right land. okay there's a lot of things playing yeah, pending funding yeah. Yeah, pending, uh, the, pending the, the we got a remake chopping mall you guys yeah <sighs> such a good concept mm. <laughs> grandpa as long as we're talking about weird stuff man mm. What is happening here, man? All right. This one is titled, Man Who Spent $14,000 to Be a Collie Dog. Oh, I saw this shit. Bites back at online sex trolls. Oh, my God. So, this this guy, it's person, like, is it a Japanese guy or something, I believe? You know what, man? I, I don't know what's under the... I just want to think of him as a collie dog. Oh, so that's a costume. That's a costume. No, no, no. They've, no, no, no. It's like more than that. No, no, they've like... like they, It's like... Uh, uh, Surgery and shit. No, oh, no, no, no. He's just a guy no. costume. No, no, it's more than oh, that. Oh, no. I promise you. Well, it's so weird. <laughs> it's so weird. I kind of want to rub his belly. 
Grambo, his YouTube channel, I couldn't help but click on the link to his YouTube channel. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what the? I'm telling you, read, read the. I it's, want it's to more... be an animal. Uh, Damn, he's got more subs than us. Dude, he's got more everything. He's, his last video has 7.9 million views. I mean, you got to admit, that's weird. <laughs> I, I hope. How long is this video? Five minutes. He just walks up to people and says, "Hello, my name is Taco." Oh God, wouldn't that not freak you out? Oh, I'd be so yeah, out. Is- out, especially when a Japanese adult man. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, apparently, a fourteen thousand on it is on just a suit. I thought he had some. I thought he actually had some like face work done as well, but it looks like it's just a suit. No, that's that's his real face. Yeah, well, no, I like. Uh, you'd, you'd be surprised at the weird shit that people do. Oh days. my god, man! All right, all right. With well, Barry's got to fit in that thing, you know. Where's where does I love just petting him. The dog is just like no, no. yeah, no. yeah. I mean, <laughs> no, it's kind of like that. It's, you see a Pizza Hut, uh, you know, it's not Pizza anymore, but you know it was a Pizza Hut. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> that dude is on that dog. Oh, it's like, that's no. <laughs> that's good shit. There's a good right. video of him outside of the suit. I, was, I kept scrolling through every video trying to find. There's no videos of him not in the suit. Grandma, Damn was, it. Grandma wants to know what he looks like. I am single and ready to mingle with you, Lassie. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> what if a super hot girl is just like, look, I have a fetish, all right? How hot? And you had a dress up in it. Me. She's really good looking, though. Actually, I'd rather be in it than her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, to answer your question, Scott, yes. Yeah. Is it non age gating freedom, man? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Make me think of something else. Now. Oh. Light something on fire, Grimbo, please. Oh, my think of something God. Else. This is unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's check this out. This is up. just. Uh, Look at this. Oh, it's the, so the yeah. slow-mo that took a bunch of fans. Yeah, the slow-mo guys. These are some of the most famous YouTubers on Earth. How come they got that like that, man? Uh-huh. Mine actually showed it. It looks uh-huh. a lot slow-mo, guys. Uh-huh. I could have read that on the lower thirds. <laughs> uh, it could be that I zoom in. Oh, there you yeah. go. Uh-huh. So the slow-mo guys are cool. Not familiar. I am not either. They but. shoot things in hyper, I'm kinda, hyper wow. fast motion. They have a camera that shoots at 1 million frames per second. Did you see the Whoa. demons in there, man? It seems like a lot. Oh, they're telling me to do things. <laughs> yeah, they have cameras so slow that they shine light through uh, water. And then because water is a resistant to light, it slows it down. And you can actually see photons. Traveling, you can watch a, a photon so cool. traveling it because it lowers. The hey, speed. show it! You're showing us instead, man. Know. We suck. Everyone knows the fire tornado. This is the most famous thing on the internet. I haven't seen it because you guys are businessmen. You have life. We're busy. We're out there making deals. You don't have to yeah. look at the internet. Us stuff, plebs man. down here in the internet. We just on TikTok, bro. <laughs> no, I don't take I can't stop is, looking at it. I because I'm obsessed with video stuff. So yeah, I've seen this so many times. It's so cool. Look how like. Fluid it is. It is insane. Looking. Yeah, it's so cool. All right, so they got man. That's how we're gonna end the show is by staring at fire. Why don't you just let it play? Oh man, yeah, let's do it. Just like, man. Hey, if you did miss the last show, we had a great conversation with Jaron from New Millennium. I know that guy about bro science versus bro science, and that was a good one, brother. It was good. We went through some good stuff on that one. Went through a lot of different stuff. Heck yeah. Hey, thanks for hanging out, man. Appreciate you spending your day with us. Man. Thank you guys very much. Always appreciate it. appreciate everybody in the crew. Um, always good. Uh, always good hanging. Absolutely. Grambo, good hanging, brother. Course, Thanks, buddy. Always. Thank you for the amazing flower. This gl- girl was fire, Jim. <laughs> the glue, <laughs> huh? The glue. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's go smoke some weed. Peace. Hey. <laughs>